Hello everyone, welcome to part three of the six month collection update. This will be CDs, and I'm doing this one solo, and oh my god, there's a bunch of these. So this one's going to be a bit long. Sorry if you don't like this stuff, but I'm doing it anyway. We're going to start off with uh, a couple CDs I got autographed in Atlanta. The only band I got autographs from was Voyager, because they're a, a band I really, really like. And I was able to get The Meaning of I and V signed by the whole band. I actually got to talk personally with the one of the guitarists, Simone, and the lead singer, Danny. Danny, specifically, I talked to for like two and a half hours. So, they're all really chill, and that, that was definitely one of the best moments of me going to Atlanta, like, that I've ever had. So, really cool to have these. I'm glad to have some autographs. But, we move on to uh, the Prog Power sampler disc that I always do every year. Uh, I have this one. This is my fifth one? No. Sixth one that I have. Excuse me. Uh, yeah, 2013, 14, 15, 16, 17, and this is 2018. Uh, so we'll flip it over and see who's on the back. Manimal, you'll actually see this album later. Halcyon Way, which has been on here before. Lance King, the original singer for uh, Pyramaze. Uh, Fierce Atmospheres has been on there before. Uh, Am Amorphous, uh, they're a pretty big melodic death metal band. Uh, Epica, doing one of their Attack on Titan covers, which is random. Halcyon Way again. Uh, Udo, as in the, uh, I, I know them from somewhere, I just can't remember. Udo is short for Udo Dirk Schneider, who is the original lead singer for the heavy metal band Except. Uh, King Crow, uh, you'll see this album later as well. Uh, and then we got the Night Flight Orchestra, which is some uh, AOR from like a bunch of death metal band members. Uh, and then Dy D Dynasty off of their new album, which is pretty cool. Although they're not on the actual track list, which is pretty funny. But pretty cool here. Another sampler disc to have, which is always pretty fun. Then we go on to some classic albums here. Classic rock slash metal. First up, we actually have uh, a CD my dad sent me because he had a double of it, which is pretty cool because it's a band that he likes that I've wanted to check out for a while. Uh, it is actually Saxon. It's their album Rock the Nation all the way back from, uh, like, the... 1986. Good old classic metal album. I've been wanting to check out Saxon because I've heard good things about him. Although this album didn't too impress me too much, it just felt like 80s rock um, or 80s metal. The only song I particularly liked was track number three, Waiting for the Night. Otherwise, it, eh, it's okay. Uh, I might check out more of them. It's probably going to be their more modern stuff, which a lot of people will probably give me crap for that, but I don't care. But it was cool because I got it for free. Next up, we actually have a very, very popular proto prog album, a uh, very old, probably the, one of the oldest albums I actually have in total. It is actually uh, In the Court of the Crimson King by King Crimson. I've been wanting to check out this album for a long time. This is a remaster, uh, but spec from like 1969 or 68, I can't quite remember when it was. The only song I particularly liked would be the title track, The Court of the Crimson King, the last one. Uh, this album is super jazz influenced, like you can, you can tell. Uh, it wasn't quite what I was expecting, but you know what? That's okay. Uh, it's cool to have an album like this because it's 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 considered a, a classic. So uh, I had to pick it up. Plus, it was pretty cheap when I bought it. Yeah, pretty cool to have. Then we go on to another classic album that we found. That Crystal, I think I believe. No, I bought this one, but Crystal's more of a fan of these guys than I am. But it's Judas Priest, and it's. Pretty much they're one of their more famous albums, British Steel, uh, obviously with Breaking the Law on it. So, uh, I love that song, and United is actually a really good song on here too. Otherwise, it was it was okay. I still think my favorite album is uh, Painkiller, or um, even um, Angel of Retribution. I actually kind of like that album, but it was the first real Judas Priest album I ever heard. And uh, that's going to sound weird, but... I don't care. Now, it's pretty cool to have this one. There's only a few Judas Priest albums I want now. Uh, I think there's only like three or four that I really want. But pretty cool to have this. Okay, then we go on to the more modern uh, albums. Uh, we start off with, uh, technically I've had this CD for a long time, but I just recently found it again. Because um, at first I didn't really care enough to want to listen to it. But then I actually became friends with the guitarist. So, uh, I made a point to actually listen to it this time. Uh, it's a band none of you have probably ever heard of. 
Uh, it's a band called Infidel Rising. Uh, it's actually signed by the entire band at this point. The, my friend is no longer a part of this band. Uh, but I checked this album out for him, basically. Uh, and he's a heck of a guitarist because he was the lead guitarist on this. Um, but songs on here that I like. Uh, first off, track two, Hollow Demor, or however you want to pronounce that. Uh, the Torn Wings of Illusion, the title track. Because this is the, the their only album so far, The Torn Wings of Illusion. Uh, Reflections, Power of Goodbye, Cloning Appearance, Finding Nevermore. Uh, and then the, the, the big epic of the, the CD, the 12-minute Great Discovery. Uh, and my stepmom always said that he fits a 20-minute guitar solo into a 12-minute song. I don't quite understand that, but, you know, it's still uh, really good. Um, I actually was really impressed by this album. I wasn't expecting much when I listened to it. But I was pretty much live chatting with my friend about this and getting a bunch of thank yous. It was pretty funny. But uh, pretty cool to have this. Uh, hopefully these guys make another album. That would be kind of cool uh, to hear about. Um, but, yeah, pretty cool to have. All right, then we go on to a prog power band from this year that I actually got to see in Atlanta. And I was this is a really special one to me because this CD is out of print and hard to find. And I had to resort to some outside methods. Well, not really out outside methods. I found... Uh, another website because of this CD that's actually really, really good. Uh, I'll explain it after I get to it, but it's actually the opening band on Saturday uh, for this last year, or this year. It's Triosphere, and their first and only album I didn't have, Onwards. Now, I was really hyped for this album because I adore Part of the Matter and uh, The Road Less Traveled. They were both really, really good. This album, eh. Yeah, there's only two songs on here I particularly like, uh, Trinity and Lament. Otherwise, eh. I gotta listen to Sunriser again because they did that live and it was really good. So I was really hoping the Onwards thing would be great because it's like a almost 20 minute altogether th song. But I basically found this CD through a website called Discogs.com. I'll put that up on screen. Basically any super out of print CD you can kind of find relatively easy uh, on there. Even even other ones. But uh, there's actually a, I believe there's one more on here in this list of CDs, in this, this stack of CDs that I got through that website, but it was really, really nice to find this. It came all the way from the Netherlands, so this was, it took a little while to get here. This is this I've had for about six months now. I, I got this one a long time ago, um, but really cool to have this, and I'm glad I was able to find this one, because that's their whole discography. I can't wait for another one. The, these guys are amazing. They, their live show was incredible. <laughs> So it was it was really good to to to, have, to get this, but yeah. Then we go on to the opening band on Friday. That is a, this is actually their new album because I had their whole discography up until basically when Prog Power happened because this this CD came out the day they performed. It is Manimal and their newest album Purgatorio. Uh, they basically announced that this album was coming out. And I was like, great, I gotta get this. And I really liked Trapped in the Shadows. Darkest Room was okay. Their live show was amazing. Another band that blew the roof off. But I love this back, the little back cover. But songs on here I like. Uh, Black Plague, uh, Purgatorio, Manimalized, Spreading the Dread, uh, Behind Enemy Lines, Denial, and Edge of Darkness were all really good. Uh, this might be their best album, to be honest. Uh, I... The, their live show was amazing. Uh, there's there's really not much else to say now, but these guys are good. I'll have to keep an eye out for these guys for sure, for more of their stuff. But really cool to have this one. Then we go on to the opening band on Thursday next year for Prog Power, actually. I picked this up. It is a band called Tomorrow's Eve, and this is Mirror of Creation 2, Genesis 2. Um, now this is the second of three concept albums uh unfortunately this is the only one i have so far and that was probably a mistake picking it up because i don't quite understand the story i understand the story of this album specifically i will have to get the first one which is going to be a little bit difficult and then the third one actually just came out it's the third one is their first album in like 10 years but these guys are from germany uh this is actually a pretty good album it, it was very very well done it's some good power metal um but songs on here i like uh, the intro track, Man Without a Name, and then Amnesia. Uh, the Eve Suite, which is nine minutes long. Uh, the Market of Umbra. 
irreversible uh, rebirth the human device and then the night 17 minute track the trials of man uh, very good these guys are gonna be fun at prog power because I guess the bassist for Symphony X and the drummer for uh, labyrinth is actually a part of the band or at least we're on the, the third mirror of creation album I'll have to get more of these guys because they were pretty fun to listen to though very very good uh, you know very very cool then we go on to a band uh, that I saw at prog power the year crystal actually went with me back in 2014 and I have their two newest albums uh, every album before that is out of print to my knowledge uh, but I was somehow able to find these in Atlanta I still don't know how it's Divided Multitude and their first album, Inner Self, and then their, I believe this is their third album, uh, Guardian Angel. Now, Guardian Angel I've heard is, is you can kind of find in, in certain places, but Inner Self I haven't heard that you could find. This is their first album, but um, honestly, this album isn't that great. It didn't impress me at all. The, the mixing isn't all that good, so I don't really have a lot to say about this first album. But Guardian Angel, uh, there's a couple songs on here I actually liked. Uh, Something for Someone and uh, Deeds of Deception were both really good. Uh, still, the mix wasn't all that great. Definitely, uh, Feed on Your Misery is probably their best album, and it's the only album that is relevant, because I guess their singer left the band uh, recently, so that's a shame, uh, because he was amazing. But otherwise, still pretty cool to have. Um, somehow find these really hard to find CDs in random places, but pretty cool to have though. Uh, I don't have a lot to say about both of them because they weren't all that impressive, but you know, it is what it is. All right, next up is a band that I was able to complete the discography for finally. I picked this up. This is their second album. Uh, it's Andromeda. This is their second album, Two Equals One. Uh, I have all their other albums. They haven't actually released an album in like seven years, but still. Um, I have this one because I've just I like them quite a bit. I just like their singer and their their musical style. Uh, this CD's all right. The songs on here I liked were uh, Mirages, Two Equals One, and Morphing Into Nothing were all pretty good. This was pretty good, pretty good to get because I have every like I said I have every other album. So I just needed to complete the discography. Uh, it's not their best one. Uh, I still think their first or the last one was their best, but um, still pretty good to have this to complete the discography. Then we go on to a band that I am really, really getting into lately. Uh, I mean, I got their, at the time, it was their most recent album. They actually released a new one since then, and I was able to get two of their albums in Atlanta. I was able to, it's a band called Borealis, and I absolutely love their album, Purgatory. Uh, and these two are amazing, too. This is their second album, Fall From Grace, and their newest album, The Offering. Uh... We'll start with Fall From Grace because it's the oldest, but this is an amazing album. All of the songs on here are good. Finest Hour, Words, Words I Failed to Say, Fall From Grace, Where We Started, Breaking the Curse, Regeneration, Watch the World Collapse, Take You Over, Forgotten Forever, and the bonus track, uh, The Journey Prologue. Very, very good. This is apparently a re-release from last year, though. Um, but very, very good. I am only missing their first album, uh, which the original version is out of print, and they re-recorded it or re-released it or whatever. So I'll have to get that at some point. But this album, this is a concept album, again, uh, but instead of it being a soul going through purgatory, it's about a cult that sacrifices children in the name of their god. Wow, what is with these guys doing really dark themes? But another amazing album, no bad songs on here. This is, this is very close to purgatory. I, I can't really decide which one I think I like more. But uh, every song in here is good. The Fire Between Us, Sign of No Return, The Offering, River, The Second Sun, The Devil's Hand, Into the Light, Scarlet Angel, The Awakening, The Path Forever Lost, and The Ghosts of Innocence. Very, very good. Uh, I, I do think I like this album a little bit better than Fall From Grace, but uh, they're all very, very good. These guys are amazing. Uh, it took me way too long to check these guys out. Uh, I wish I had discovered them sooner, but I hope to see these guys... Period. Even if it's not at Prague Power, I'd like to see if I could see them somewhere eventually. That would be awesome. Because uh, these guys... These guys are amazing. <laughs> Their singer is so good. But very, very good. Check these guys out. It's good old Prague Power metal from uh, Canada. They're Canadian. Very good.
Then we go on to a band I actually saw in Germany last year. This is their new album. First album with the new roster. Band I like a lot, but this is Beyond the Black, their newest album, Heart of the Hurricane. That's the singer on the front, because obviously she's the front of the band. I'll, I'll go into the detail about that in a second. But uh, this album was good. I, I don't know if I'd quite call it as good as their first two albums, because it's just changed a lot. The sound has changed, because everybody else other than the singer is different. But songs on here I like, uh, Hysteria, title track, Heart of the Hurricane, Through the Mirror, Million Light Years, Beneath the Blackened Sky, Fairy Tale of Doom, My God is Dead, Dear Death, Scream for Me, uh, Breeze, and then the uh, Echo from the Past, a bonus track, was very good. Honestly, like I, I consider this slightly inferior to their first two, and that's only the fact that basically... Uh, from what I've read and heard, the singer's kind of not the best person. She kick, she basically kicked the entire band out because it's her band, apparently, which is the dumbest thing because without them, this band wouldn't be anything either. So, I don't know. It's, it's a mess, and it's a shame. But uh, cool to have another album from this band, I guess. It's, it's, it's good still. Moving on, uh, we have another prog power band from this year. It's the last album for this band I needed. It's the band Soen. This is their second album, Tellurian. Uh, I don't understand. It's a rhino eating people. I just realized that. They're like on plates like dishes and there's like a kebab with people on it. That's very strange. Now, this album was all right. Uh, again, they, they, they sound a lot like Tool. Like, I honestly didn't even see them in Atlanta. I skipped this one because I was just like, eh. Uh, but I liked the songs Kura Man or Kura Man, uh, The Words, and Koniskis or Koniskas or whatever you want to say. But uh, otherwise, it's interesting to have these guys because, I mean, it's not bad. It's just not great. Uh, that's, that's basically what I've said about all of them. I still think... I don't know if their newest one or their first one was the best, but eh, it's okay. Not a big deal. I, I just finished their discography because they weren't terrible, and there were only three albums. But not much else I have to say about it. Then we go on to one of my most anticipated bands from Prog Power this last year. Uh, and I actually got this one for free, this CD for free from my dad as well. It is actually Eclipse. Uh, and their album, Are You Ready to Rock? This is the original release. Apparently they re-released it. Uh, this is apparently like a Japanese release or something. But uh, uh, really, really cool. Uh, really, really good album. I'd say it's probably my least favorite, but every song on here is still really good. Uh, Breaking My Heart Again, Hometown Calling, uh, To Mend a Broken Heart, Wild One, Under the Gun, Unbreakable, Hard Time Loving You, Lo uh, Young Guns, Million Times, Million Miles Away, Two Souls, Call of the Wild, and the bonus track, Haunted Wanted Karma. Uh, very good. These guys, again, blew the roof off. These guys really blew the roof off in Atlanta. Um, like, they were actually cut short in the crowd. A lot of people complained about it, but, like, the stage manager actually got on online and explained the whole reasoning behind it. But these guys are amazing. I hope to see them again at some point because they were really fun. That, that singer has so much energy up on stage. It's ridiculous. Very, very good album. Very good. Then we go on to, oh man, after this album, this is probably a top five band, period, for me. Uh, this is this is the band I was really hyped for, and then they canceled in Atlanta, King Crow, uh, the band King Crow. Uh, this is their new album that just came out right around when Prog Power did. Uh, this is The Persistence. I'm sorry about that effect on the front, it's probably going to trip you all out. But uh, this definitely isn't as heavy and proggy, I would say, as all their other albums. But it's still really good. Like this band, honestly, can't can do no wrong anymore. This whole album is really good. I gotta turn it sideways to read the track list, though. Uh, Drenched closer, everything goes. Folding paper dreams, the title track, the persistence, every broken piece of me. Devil's got a picture. Nights descending, which has the singer, or basically the the man behind Pain of Salvation, Daniel Gildenlow, on it. Uh, Father and perfectly imperfect. Uh, very good album. Would I call it as good as Phlegethon? No. Uh, in Crescendo, I'd probably put it at about the same level as that. I need to listen to Eidos again now, definitely, because that's the only one I'm, other one I have. Uh, I'd love to get their earlier stuff before they had this singer, but they're all out of print and hard to find. My dad has them, but he's willing to pay more money for CDs than I am, so that doesn't surprise me. But very, very... Oh, God, I love this album. 
this band is so good. Seriously, this is like a band I cannot suggest enough for anyone. This band is amazing. I want everybody to listen to this band. Seriously, they're that good. They are that good. But I, I we gotta move on to the other CDs. We move on to a band I haven't actually bought an album from since I went and saw them at Prague Power, which would have been back in 2016 when I saw them, I believe. And I was able to find this one in Atlanta this year, uh, and this is considered one of their better ones. Before they got super, like, over-the-top, like, jokey, because they do a bunch of happy songs, and there's still some on here that are, are kind of happy, but it's less happy. This is Freedom Call and their album Eternity. This is from 2002. Uh, again... Uh, reoccurring theme here. There's not a bad song on this album either. Uh, Metal Invasion, Flying Home, Flying High, excuse me. Aces of Ages of Power, The Spell, Bleeding Heart, Warriors, The Eyes of the World, Flame in the Night, which is apparently a bonus track, Land of Light, uh, Island of Dreams, and Turn Back Time. All very, very good. Uh, I like these guys a lot. I just love the singer's voice. I love how happy they are. I want to get more of these guys. Uh, I just haven't gotten around to it. Because it just hasn't happened because I've been buying other stuff. But really cool to have another one of these guys again. It's really cool. So we go moving on to the third band on Friday this year at Prague Power. Uh, and this is going to be a reoccurring... Now we're going to have a continuing reoccurring theme here uh, every so often of uh, multiple CDs from bands. Uh, I already had one, I believe. Yeah, we already had Borealis, but... This is all prog power stuff. It's actually Bloodbound, a band I was really into. I have three albums here. We have their third album, Tabula Rasa, their fifth album, In the Name of Metal, and their sixth album, Stormborn, uh, which was the first one I ever heard of. Um, so we'll go ahead and start with In the Name of Metal, because actually I think this is the weakest album of theirs, period. Um, personally, uh, but this one just feels like a, it's super like over the top metal. It's like a, a metal anthem album. Let's see, we got Bone Breaker, Sons of Son of Babylon, uh, Monster Mind, uh, King of Fallen Grace, Black Devil, and uh, Bounded by Blood. And then they did a version of Book of the Dead, uh, which didn't have this singer, their most current singer, in it. And it's a really good version. It's probably I don't know if it's better than the original or not. But this album was was pretty good. Definitely their weakest album. But these other two here, uh, this this Stormborn, not a bad song in this album. Blood Tales, Satanic Panic, Iron Throne, Nightmares from the Grave, Stormborn, We Raise the Dead, Made of Steel, Blood of My Blood, When the Kingdom Will Fall, Seven Hells, and When All Lights Fail. All very good. This is definitely a very, very good album. I like these guys a lot. Uh, but then... We go on to this album, their third album, Tabula Rasa, where Urban Breed came back, their original singer. And I have their first album, and it wasn't anything special, but this album is a lot better. Another one, not a bad song on it. Sweet Dreams of Madness, Dominion 5, Take 1, the title track, Tabula Rasa, Night Touches You, Tabula Rasa Part 2, Nothing at All, Plague Doctor, Master of My Dreams, Twisted Kind of Fate, and All Rights Reserved. All very, very good. Um... This band was... Uh, their live show was okay. I think there was a mix issue, but it was still really cool to see them. Um, really cool to have every CD from this band, actually. I have their whole discography with these three discs. But really, really cool to have. I really I really do like these guys. They're definitely very good. Can't wait for more of the stuff from them, for sure. Then we go on to the last CD that I got for free from my dad because he got a second copy. Uh, and it's actually a band I've wanted to check out for a while because the singer did uh, was on my one of my favorite albums of all time, uh, The Human Equation by Arion. Uh, I've wanted to check these guys out. They actually played uh, Vakken when I went back in 2017. And I come to find out after I listen to this album that they're actually playing Prog Power next year. It is actually a band called Psychotic Waltz. Uh, this is their third album, Mosquito. Um, when I heard of these guys, I was told they were kind of like psychedelic stoner metal, but they're pretty prog. Uh, their singer has that high falsetto kind of singing, like, like, uh, Rob Halford from Judas Priest, but not as much power. It's hard to explain. But this album, 
uh, wasn't actually all that terrible. I was quite impressed by it. I'll definitely be picking up more of these guys. Title Track Mosquito was really good. Love Stone Blind was good. Haze One, Shattered Sky, Cold, uh, all the voices were, they were all pretty good. Um, I'll definitely be picking more of these guys up. I don't know how hard it'll be because I, a lot of them, or a lot of these discs are actually out of print. I don't know how my dad got a lot of these, but again, he pays money for stuff. So <laughs> pretty cool to have this though. I'll, um, they'll be fun at Prague Power because they're, they're, yeah, they're, they haven't really done anything new in almost 20 years. So it'll be fun. It'll definitely be fun to, uh, to listen, to listen to. Very good though. Then we go on to a band that canceled, another canceling band from Prog Power that had to cancel pretty last minute. I'll tell the story about this one as well after I'm done talking about the albums and stuff. That band is actually Dream Evil, and this is probably the band I have the most CDs of. I have four of them uh, because I was able to find a couple of their CDs together and cheap. Uh, and without cases, but I had the extra cases to work with. I have four of them, like I said. We have their first album, Dragon Slayer. Their second album, Evilized. Their third album, The Book of Heavy Metal. And their fifth album, In the Night. So I guess we'll just go in order of CDs here, or albums here, to talk about. We'll start with their first album, Dragon Slayer, which this is a this is not the original case. Uh, it only came with all the artwork and the, the CD. So I had to have a, I have the extra jewel cases to to go with here, but uh, this is this is um, back when they had uh, the the ex guitarist for Ozzy and uh, the, the guitarist that basically founded Firewind, Gus G. He was a member up until uh, after the Book of Heavy Metal. Um, but these first two albums are are more like classical, they're classic power metal sounding, like in the sense where they sing about dragons and adventures and that kind of power metal, if if you know what I'm saying. So. Uh, this is definitely different, but still very good. Same singer and everything. But songs on here I like. Uh, Chasing the Dragon, uh, The Prophecy, The Chosen Ones, Losing You, and HMJ, which is Heavy Metal Jesus, by the way, is what that stands for. Um, very good. It was definitely different, but pretty cool. Pretty cool I have, definitely. It's, I, it's old looking. This thing's from 2002. Yeah. Very cool, though. And then their second album, which was released the next year in 2003, uh, Evilized, I, I don't think I liked quite as much, but songs on here I liked. Uh, By My Side, uh, Evilized, the title track, uh, Children of the Night, and The End. <laughs> Ironically, the last song. But very pretty good, too. Um, again, this one didn't come with the case either, so this is one of my regular jewel cases. But pretty cool to have. I found these from the same seller on eBay. I can't remember where it came from. But pretty cool to have. Definitely. So then we have their third album, which I actually bought after they canceled. But it was the only album I was missing, so I just bought it. Uh, it's The Book of Heavy Metal by a Dream Evil, which was the first album I heard of from them. So I thought it was their best one, but apparently it's not. But... Uh, songs on here are like The Book of Heavy Metal, March of the Metallons, Into the Moonlight, uh, The Sledge, uh, Crusader's Anthem, Tired, <laughs> Chosen Twice, Only for the Night, and Unbreakable Chain. Uh, very good. Uh, this is actually the album, if I remember correctly, this album also had Snowy Shaw on it. I think he only did one album with them, I think. So that's probably why a lot of people like it the most, but I don't know. Moving on, we get to their fifth album, and the last of theirs that I needed. Uh, this is In the Night. This album is alright, probably not my favorite. I don't know which album of theirs is my favorite, to be honest, but uh, I liked Immortal, the first track here. Uh, See the Light. Frostbite, uh, On the Wind, and The Unchosen One uh, were, were very good. But pretty cool to have this band's entire discography. Hopefully eventually I get to see them, because they were originally supposed to be like a headliner or something at Prog Power, and uh, they basically did a bunch of stuff that kind of screwed themselves over for coming over. So they were basically blacklisted from Prog Power, and then they got reinvited, which is interesting and then they had to cancel again because of basically they, they canceled this last time because I guess one of the band members last year took a plane 
uh, from Mexico and accident and inadvertently it flew into U.S. airspace and he didn't have like a a work permit or whatever, so he was blacklisted from flying to the U.S. He couldn't jo go to the U.S. for like two years or something like that. It's so dumb. And a lot of people think it was the singer because that's like the most important one that they couldn't really do without, so... I don't know. It's a mess. They had to cancel for that. Hopefully they'll be back. I don't know. But still pretty cool. Pretty sad to see them cancel. Then we go on to the Halfway Band on, on, on Friday this year. Uh, the band that did their whole Return to Heaven Denied album in its entirety. I actually picked up two more of their albums. Uh, funny story about the second one here. But I got their first album, uh, No Limits. This is a re-release, limited edition with some bonus tracks. And then this is their like third album, Sons of Thunder. Uh, we'll start with No Limits because it's actually... it, it was It's the only album without... Uh, their singer that they have now. It actually has uh, Fabio Leone from Who Sings for Anger Now and Sang for Rhapsody of Fire. For a long time he's in this because they're both from Italy. This is also from Japan apparently. Oh yeah, that's right. This limited edition is Japanese only. Uh, but songs on here I like. Uh, Dreamland, uh, No Limits, the title track, The Right Sign, uh, Time Has Come, and Miles Away, the bonus track here. Pretty good. I, this is probably my least favorite album of theirs that I heard. But it wasn't absolutely terrible. Uh, still pretty cool to have, though. I uh, Pretty cool, especially the limited edition like this. But then there's this album, Sons of Thunder. Man, I have, I don't have, I have a lot to say about this CD, not because of the album, uh, but because of what it took to get this CD. Um, but we'll start with songs on here that I like. Uh, chapter 1, Catherine. Elegy, Elegy, uh, Rage of the King, and Save Me. We're good. Now, really funny story about this album. Uh, in order for me to actually get this album, I had to buy it three times on eBay. B the first two times, it was sent and never showed up, so I had to get a refund for it. Uh, and then I finally, I said, third time's a charm. If I don't get it this time, I'm going to have somebody else buy it for me and then have them ship it to me or something. Because it's like, was I not ever meant to have this album? Mind you, it wasn't. I was hoping it would be better than it actually was, um, because of how what it took to get it. But you know what, I did get it, and that's pretty cool. Um, but there are still a few albums of theirs I need. This I don't have their whole discography, but still pretty cool. Um, pretty cool to have. Then we go on to a band that I really like now, and it was the uh, the band before the headliner on Fridays. It is actually Redemption. I have three albums here. Their second album, The Fullness of Time. Their fourth album, uh, and most popular album, Snowfall on Judgment Day. I have a lot to say about this. And their newest album with the new lead singer, Tom England from Evergrey. Uh, their newest album, Long Night's Journey into Day. We'll actually talk about it We'll talk about Fullness of Time first. Um, not a bad song on this album at all. I actually picked up this album because a friend of mine that I met at Prog Power said it was a very good album. But nothing bad on here. Threads, Parker's Eyes, which is about his daughter, uh, how she basically can't see. There's another song in one of the other albums, but this is the original. Uh, Scarred, Sapphire, which is 50, almost 16 minutes long. And then the last four tracks comprise one song called The Fullness of Time that equals out to about 20 minutes. Um, all very, very good. Uh, very, very good album. Uh, this actually surprised me with how very, very good it was. So uh, I definitely put this up there. Um, probably my second, third favorite because the new one's really good too. But very good. Then we'll actually go on to the new one, uh, Long Night's Journey Today. I didn't know what to expect from this because... Uh, their new singer has such a drastic, different singing style than Ray Alder from Fate's Warning. But again, not a bad song on this album either. Uh, Eyes, you <laughs> Eyes You Dare Not Meet in Dreams, Someone Else's Problem, amazing song. The Echo Chamber, another really great song. Impermanent, Indulgent Color, another really great song. Little Men, and yet, The Last of Me, New Year's Day, which is a cover of U2. And then the title track, Long Night's Journey into Day, which is ten and a half minutes long. All very, 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 very good songs. Uh, I had put this up there. These three albums are easily their best. I would say that right now. Very, very good. Um, but this album here uh, was something else. I 
Uh, th I bought this album as a last, last ditch effort to try to really, really get into this band because I had uh, Art of Loss and This Mortal Coil and the mix just sounded so bad. I have a newfound respect. After seeing them live, that live show was incredible. I, I have a newfound respect for those albums now, though. But I bought this album as a last ditch effort to try to like this band, and uh, it took almost three months for this CD to get here. Um, I actually got it before I got, I paid for this before I got Art of Loss, which was in like my last collection video. I got it before a lot of CDs, and it, it came from Russia, and for some reason it sat in the Netherlands for two months, and then just randomly showed up. It was really, really weird. Plus, I didn't realize it at the time, and this is the this CD is the reason I bought a bunch of jewel cases, uh, and I replaced some cracked ones of mine. But I had apparently all that came, this came with was the artwork, the CD, and the thing. No, no case. I didn't realize that. I don't think it actually said it in the uh, the eBay listing that I bought this for. But it is what I don't really care anymore. But this album is probably the best album this band's ever done. I'll have to listen to it again, because Long Night's Journey is really good. But, uh, let's see. Peel, Walls, Leviathan Rising, Black and White World, which, apparently, uh, Indulgent Color is a sequel to that song, apparently. Uh, Unformed, Keep Breathing, Another Day Dies, which has James Labrie from Dream Theater on it. Uh, what Will You Say, Fistful of Sand, and Love Kills Us All, Life in One Day. They're all... Oh, man, these... Oh, this is apparently the Russian version. Uh, but all very good. All, three amazing albums. These, This is a, one of my favorite bands now, to be honest. They did a live show that they recorded for a DVD and Blu-ray. Uh, yeah, they're all... It's just... just these, these, these albums are so good. Like, emotionally, some of the, like... Next to, to Pain of Salvation, probably the most emotionally charged lyrics I've ever heard in any form of music. But... Moving on, move on to a band I really like and that I've wanted to get more CDs of, and I was able to get them through different means, mostly online, but I found one of them at a local used CD store. It is actually Spock's Beard. Uh, I have here three albums. I have their second album, finally, their second album, uh, Beware of Darkness. And then their fourth album, Day for Night, which basically concludes the Neil Morse uh, era of Spock's Beard for me. So I have all of them, all of the Neil Morse ones. And then I got their newest album here, uh, Noise Floor, uh, which means I'm, I now have every Ted Leonard, or their newest singer. I just, I'm only missing one, two CDs. They're self-titled and Octane, which both have their drummers singing. But we'll go ahead, go ahead and start with their new album, I think. This was actually a good album. A lot of people were apparently disappointed by this one, Noise Floor. I liked it a lot. It was still really, really good. Uh, to Breathe Another Day is good. Uh, what Becomes of Me, Somebody's Home, which is about, um, I believe it's about the singers, like somebody in his family who has some disease where, like MS or uh, some uh, mental disease. I can't quite remember exactly what it is. Beginnings down here at the bottom, and then they had there is actually a bonus disc of what, called Cutting Room Floor, so tracks they cut from the original record. And three of these I really like. Uh, Days Will Remember, Bulletproof, and Vault here I really like. Pretty good album. I, I still think uh, their first album with Ted is the best. Uh, Thoughtless something or other. I always forget the name of it. It's like, I can't remember. But it's better than Oblivion Particle, I'll say that. Maybe I gotta listen to it again, I don't know. But very, very good album. Um... We'll actually move on to their second album here, uh, Beware of Darkness. This is actually a re-release, special edition with some bonus tracks. There's the original cover. I wanted this album for a little while because their earlier stuff's considered really, really good. Uh, but songs on here I like. Thoughts is good because they actually have like a Thoughts Part 2 on one of their other albums. Uh, the Doorway is good, 11 and a half minutes long. Chautauqua, I think that's how that's pronounced. It's an instrumental. Uh, Walking on the Wind, a Waste Away. And that's it. Uh, pretty good album. Uh, I would probably put it up there. I, I honestly prefer the Neil Morse era. I think that that's their best era of music. Um, Snow is their best album, honestly, as a whole. I'll have to listen to it again. But then we go on to Day for Night, uh, 
which is from 1999. Yeah, this whole album is great. Honestly, not a bad song on here. The title track, Day for Night, Gibberish Skin, The Distance to the Sun, Crack the Big Sky, The Gypsy, Can't Get It Wrong. And then tracks 8 through 13, technically there's 14 songs on here, but it doesn't have the last one on here. But all these songs uh, are one song called The Healing Colors of Sound. They basically represent a whole song that's like 20 minutes long. Very, very good. Uh, I like this whole album. Uh, I really need to get their last, the last two albums I need of theirs and just get that done because I want to really bad. Moving on, we go on to uh, the band before the headliner on Saturday night this next year at Prog Power. And it's a band I've heard of and been meaning to check out for a long time. And I have a, the friend I met at Prog Power, this is one of his favorite bands. In fact, the second album here is probably his favorite album of all time. And my dad's been getting into them huge. So I bought these before they were announced at Prog Power, I believe. So I bought these. But it's actually the band Threshold. And I got two albums here. I got their newest album that was released last year, Legends of the Shires, which is two discs. I th this is some like European version. It's So it has that white. It's basically no... It's It doesn't even have the track listing on here. Uh, and then the album two previous to that, March of Progress. Now, uh, this band has had three different lead singers at different times. One of them, unfortunately, has passed away. But uh, their original singer, Damian Wilson, I have heard on uh, an Arion album, and he's great. And then this album is the return of their uh, uh, their singer that basically they made their most uh, critically acclaimed album with, uh, Glenn Morgan. But um, both of these albums are flawless. Uh, both of them are very, very good. I prefer March of Progress over Legends of the Shires, but there is not a bad song on either of these. There is a, a pretty distinct difference between the two. Legends of the Shires is super, super proggy. Uh, March of Progress is still really, really progressive, but it has more heaviness in it. Don't get me wrong, I, I, I like Legends of the Shires, but personally, and that, that would offend my friend, but personally, I think I like March of Progress more only because I like Damian Wilson's voice better. But basically, the track listing for uh, Legends of the Shires, because I, it's not on the back, which is the dumbest thing I've ever seen, it's actually two discs. So, and every song is good. You got The Shire Part 1, Small Dark Lines, The Man Who Saw Through Time, Trust the Process, Stars and Satellites, and On the Edge. And then Disc 2 is The Shire Part 2, Snowblind, Subliminal Freeways, State of Independence, Superior Machine, The Shire Part 3, Lost in Translation, and Shallowed. All very good songs on this album. Very good, but I, I don't know what it is about this album, but it's so good. All the songs. Ashes, Return of the Thought Police, Staring at the Sun, Liberty, Complacency, Dependency, Colophon or Solophon. The Hours, That's Why We Came, Don't Look Down, Coda, The Rubicon, and the bonus track, Divinity. All very good. Um, I need to buy more of these guys for sure. Uh, I need to get the... Uh, their their mo most like most famous singer is the one that unfortunately passed away. but And I need to get at least an album of him. And I intend to entirely. But that'll probably be the next one I buy, maybe. I might do the only other album that Glenn did with them, just so I can have the two that they're probably going to play music off of. But, moving on, we actually have uh, the band that replaced Dream Evil, or the woman that replaced Dream Evil and her solo band. It is actually Doro Pesh, and this is her album. Uh, she did just release a new album. It's a double album. Uh, I bought this before that came out because I wanted an album of theirs, of hers. Uh, this is the album before that, Raise Your Fist, which, and, and honestly, it's, it's in a really weird, like, the way it's elongated, it doesn't quite look like a normal CD just in comparison here it's a little bit longer um, but it's like a book almost but this is considered one of her weaker albums I didn't realize that until after I had listened to it and it's not that great but uh, Rock Till Death is good uh, Angle which I believe is in German uh, it's about Angel it's called it's Angel that's right uh, Revenge uh, Victory and Hero uh, Hero's actually about Ronnie James Dio, if I remember right, and it's very, very good. Um, I, I don't know if I'm going to buy any more of hers. Probably not, honestly. I know she's like the queen of heavy metal, but I this was okay. If this is what I have to, if this is all I'm going to listen to, uh, if, if this is what I have to look forward to, I don't know if I want any more. But still, 
it's cool to have at least one Doro album because it is Doro, and her live show was great. Don't get me wrong; she she knows how to how to play the crowd really really well. Then we go on to the headliner or the co-headliner on Wednesday night with Voyager, and it's actually Nocturnal Rites. I have two albums here. I have their third album, Sacred Talisman, which was a steal where I found it on eBay, and then their seventh album, Grand Illusion. Uh, now I got. We're going to talk about Grand Illusion first. Uh, I got this album because of the guitarist for Mind Maze. Uh, same with uh, New World Messiah. He really likes these two albums. So I picked it up expecting good. And it was. They're definitely better than Phoenix. Uh, but they weren't fantastic. But great songs on here that were really good. Fools Never Die, Never Trust, Our Wasted Days, uh, End of Our Rope. Never Ending and One by One were good on here. I like this album quite a bit. I'd say it's about on par with New World Messiah, uh, Prog Power Metal, some good stuff. But what was really funny is this album actually came out of nowhere for me. This is back when they were apparently more classic power metal sounding, and before they have the singer they have now, um, that, who's been basically half their lifespan. But honestly, every song on this album is amazing. Because <laughs> it's more classic power metal. I'm like, this is what I need. Destiny Calls, The Iron Force, Right On, Free At Last, Hold On To The Flame, Eternally Holds, When Fire Comes To Ice, The Legend Lives On, The Rings Command, Unholy Powers, Night Of The Witch, and Glorious. All very good. I actually prefer this album. This is probably my favorite album of theirs, and they played a whole none of it at Prog Power because they have their current singer, but that's okay. It's not that big of a deal. Still my favorite album of theirs. Moving on, we actually have a live... Uh, there's two live albums in this uh, stack, believe it or not. This first one is a live album I've been waiting for uh, this band to release. And it's actually a DVD as well, but I just put it in here because it's music. It is actually Haken and their live album. Uh, it's live, but it's L-1VE. Uh, because their last uh, album was called Affinity, and it was super computer-based, so I think that's what they were going for. But this is a two DVD, two CD set. Uh, the two CDs have the main concert on that are on the first DVD in Amsterdam, but the second DVD has four songs from their last, or not their last time at Prague Power, but the last time I saw them at Prague Power, uh, which includes Crystallized, which is an amazing song. But um, very, very good live show. Uh, they do basically songs from every album of theirs, uh, Affinity, The Mountain, Visions and uh, Aquarius and then technically with the Prague Power Show they actually do a song off of the EP the uh, uh, Restoration EP but very very good to see like songs that I really like like Cock Cockroach King and the Architect um, in 1985 and I love Crystallize so I was glad to have that because it was when I, I saw them and then there's some music videos down here as well but very very good two thumbs up from me <laughs> for this live show very very good then we go on to the newest album from a band I saw at Vakken, and it's a band I like a lot because they're just ridiculously over-the-top cheesy power metal, and uh, I love them a lot. It's actually the new Power Wolves, uh, Sacrament of Sin, um, and this is actually the Collector's Edition, which is the main album, and then uh, this is Communal Leporum, which is an album of bands covering their songs, because uh, their last album... Uh, Blessed and Possessed, they did a cover album where they covered other bands. So this time they decided, let's have other bands cover us. us. So, very, very good. Uh, on the main album, we'll ignore this part, every song is really good. Fire and Forgive, Demons Are a Girl's Best Friend, Killers with a Cross, Incense and Iron, Where the Wild Wolves Have Gone, Stoskabet, which is all in German, uh, Night Side of Siberia, the title track, The Sacrament of Sin, Venom of Venus, Nighttime Rebel. There's actually one more track on this CD called Fist by Fist Sacralizer Strike. Unfortunately, my camera craps out every 20 minutes and will cut videos, and sometimes it's in the middle of me talking. Sorry about that, guys. Now this, this communal laporum has all kinds of covers from, let's see, uh, Amaranth, Battle Beast, Caliban, Eluvite, Epica, Cadaver, Kiss and Dynamite, Heaven Shall Burn, uh, Mille Petroza and Mark Goetz, so uh, one of the members of Creator and another band, uh, and then South of Tito Mortis, uh, but they're all covering Power Wolf in their own style. And the ones I particularly liked on this were the cover from Epica. They did Sacred and Wild. Actually, here, we'll just take 
we'll just take the disc out because it has the track listing on here. Uh, but Sacred and Wild cover from Epica, the Saltatito Mortis uh, cover of We Drink Your Blood, uh, Battle Beasts cover of Resurrection by Erection, Night of the Werewolves from Heaven Shall Burn, who's normally like a melodic death metal band, was really good actually. And then Let There Be Night from Kiss and Dynamite. Uh, the Amaranth one, unfortunately, really disappointed me. It kind of sounded terrible. But that's the cover. For this one, it has basically members from all the bands um, with with uh, with Powerwolf. And then this is the cover of the main record, which was on the front. So very, very good album. It's probably their best total album. I'll have to listen to the rest of them again. But I still think Resurrection by Erection is my favorite song. But anyway, moving on. We're getting there. We still have a few left. We still have a few left, but we're almost there. We go on to the other live album, and it's actually another live album from a band I've wanted to hear. Unfortunately, it is just CDs this time, but it's Fate's Warning Live Over Europe. Uh, I really wanted this because they do songs off their new record, which is phenomenal. Um, but it's a two-disc, obviously, like I said, and they do all kinds of songs. Basically, through the entire era of Ray Alder singing, they do, they do, you know, From the Rooftops and uh, Seven Stars from... Uh, Theories of Flight, they do Firefly from Darkness in a Different Light, they do Another Perfect Day from uh, Fate's Warning 10, uh, they do uh, One from Disconnected, um, and then they even go back to like Parallels and Inside Out, and uh, even like No Exit with uh, Acquiescence, which is part of Ivory Gate of Dream. Pleasant Shade of Grey, they do a sim uh, Perfect Symmetry, and yeah, they basically do every album he's done with them. Um, I don't need to go through the whole track list. I didn't do it with the Haken one, so I'm not going to do it. But particularly, like, From the Rooftops and Light and Shade of Things are very, very good, the live album. He, Ray Alder sounds phenomenal live. He sounds exactly the same as he does on the record, which is insane. That's hard to accomplish, but he sounds really good. Very, very good. And actually, I just realized, I think this is in Amsterdam as well, which is where the, uh, the Haken one was recorded, now that I think about it. But really good. Moving on, we have the debut record of a progressive metal supergroup. Uh, this is uh, Sons of Apollo, their, they, their debut record, Psychotic Symphony. Now, the reason this album is so far into this list, or the stack here, is because it has Mike Portnoy in it, who used to be in Dream Theater, Derek Sherinian, who also used to be in Dream Theater, uh, Ron Bumblefoot Thal, who was in Guns N' Roses, who you wouldn't think could shred, but geez, he can, he can shred. Billy Sheehan who's a hell of a bassist, and Jeff Scott Soto. Um, and this is this is, this is is a really good record. You know, their live show was incredible too, but this record was was great. I'd say their live show was a little bit better. The songs on here I liked. Uh, God of the Sun, Coming Home, Signs of the Time, Labyrinth, Alive, and then the, the last track here, the 10 and a half minute instrumental, Opus Maximus. Um, all very good, and it was really cool to see them live because they did a bunch of like falling into infinity era dream theater covers and stuff. So that was pretty cool. These guys are definitely better live than they are on record. Um, they definitely surprised me. This record is very good though. Very, very good album. I like it a lot. I can't wait for another one from these guys. Then we go on to one of the biggest power metal bands on the planet. And this is where the Discogs.com thing comes back in all this far late. Woohoo. I, I picked these two albums up again because they're supposed to be like the best two albums from this band during the best era of this band. And it's 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 the band Angra for the record. And I have uh, basically their first two albums with their second singer. Uh, I have Rebirth here and then Temple of Shadows as well. Now, Temple of Shadows, uh, I bought on Amazon, and Rebirth, I had to do Discogs. But we'll talk about Temple of Shadows first. Uh, this is a, this definitely impressed me a lot more. He does, uh, th this singer, Edu, uh, I don't know how to pronounce his name, but he sounds a lot like who they have now, uh, Fabio. So I, I almost expect that's, suspect that's why they, they basically got Fabio. But songs in here I like, uh, Waiting Silence, uh, The Temple of Hate, The Shadow Hunter. Uh, no Pain for the Dead, Winds of Destination, Sprouts of Time, Morning Star, and Late Redemption were very, very good. 
This would have been my favorite album of theirs. This is actually a concept album about the life of a crusader in the 11th century, uh, questioning the ideals of the Catholic Church. So it's an interesting concept album, very good, and it would be my favorite album of this band if I hadn't listened to this next one here, uh, Rebirth. Uh, this album is amazing. Like <laughs> This is easily their best album. Every song on this album is great. Uh, in, ex in Excelsis, Nova Era, Millennium Sun, Acid Rain, Heroes of Sand, Unholy Wars, which has two parts, Rebirth, Judgment Day, Running Alone, and Visions Prelude. All very, very good. Um, and I'm glad I was able to get this album as well, because I, I just really wanted this. I bought this again because of, actually, that friend who's the guitarist on the Infidel Rising, I bought these two because he said uh, these albums are must-own. And he's really big on Angra. So I was really happy to get these. Uh, I'll have to get some of their really old stuff. And then the rest of the stuff with this guy. For sure. Really, really cool to have. Then we go on to a band I like a lot. Uh, because of who the singer is now. Um, although they've considered... A lot of people say they've kind of... Their abilities or their lyricists and everything has gone downhill for a while. Um, but it's a band I've seen in concert twice, actually. It's Camelot. But I have here their newest album... The Shadow Theory, and then, believe it or not, I found in Atlanta their fourth album, uh, The Fourth Legacy. Um, but we'll go ahead and talk about The Shadow Theory first, because a lot of people didn't really like this too much. Uh, for the record, the bonus disc, it's two discs, it's the whole album uh, instrumental, except The Last Day of Sunlight, um, which is an actual song. The songs on here I like. I love Tommy Karavik. Uh, he's amazing, but I think he's better in Seventh Wonder. Uh, but songs in here I like, uh, Raven Light, uh, The Mission, Phantom Divine, Amnesiac, uh, Burns to Embrace, In Twilight Hours, Kevlar Skin, Static, uh, Stories Unheard, Vespertine, My Crimson Bride, and The Proud and the Broken were pretty good. This album's, I, I think it's better than Haven, honestly. I think it's better than the last couple they've done. They're slowly getting a little bit better. And for a long time I've said I preferred the Tommy era to the Roy era, which is blasphemy to a lot of people. But now that I've heard this album uh, and the first album he did, Siege Perilous, like, I have a lot more respect for that era. This album, this album's actually really fun. Uh, songs on here I like, uh, Desert Rain and Knights of Arabia, because that's just an intro. Oh, New Allegiance and the Fourth Legacy, which is another intro and song. Uh, the Shadow of Uther, A Sailor Man's Hymn, which is a great, great, great ballad. Uh, the Inquisitor, uh, Until Kingdom Come, and Lunar Sanctum. All very good. Uh, I need to listen to the other ones I have. I'm only missing one uh, Camelot album that I want. I'm not going to get their first three because Roy Kahn wasn't even the singer. But I'm only missing one Roy Kahn era uh, Camelot album now. I need to listen to all the other ones I have again just to hear them. But... Very cool to have this, and I mean, even the new one was really great. It was really fun to listen to, too. But, we're almost there. We got three CDs left, and we're done. Okay, <laughs> three CDs. But the next one was the headliner of the entire festival this year. I actually missed her because it wasn't quite my thing, but this completes the discography of hers, and it's actually Tarja Tur uh, Tur 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 Turun Turunen, I don't know. Uh, but I have her first album, My Winter Storm, which I had to buy on eBay, and then this is her, uh, it's her, like, the, the one before the most recent one, Colors in the Dark, spelled in the British sense with the O-U-R-S. Now, these albums were okay. I'm not quite into her vocal style, but, you know, it, it's really hard to explain. Well, go ahead and start with, actually, Colors in the Dark. Uh, the songs on here I liked, uh, 500 Letters, uh, Darkness and Until Silence. Uh, honestly, not that great, but it was. I like this cover. The color act cover actually looks really nice, but still pretty cool to have. Then there's this one, which was her first album post uh, leaving Nightwish, which I still think this is her, probably her best. I actually think it's okay. It's pretty good. This intro, uh, Ite Missa Est, and then I Walk Alone, which is apparently her response to being kicked out of Nightwish. Uh, and then we got The Escape of the Doll and My Little Phoenix. And then boy and his the boy and the ghost, and then sing for me, are all pretty good, but uh, probably her best album. Still not fantastic, but pretty cool to have these because this one is a little hard to find in some places. 
Uh, this one wasn't too bad to find, but it's still pretty cool to have. Pretty cool to have her whole discography, to be honest. I mean, I guess, even though I didn't go see her. But finally, the final CD of this uh, is a huge disappointment, I'm going to be honest with you, but it is pretty much considered, the. it's one of the bands considered the founding, like the founders of the power European power metal uh, movement, and it's Halloween, and this is their album Pink Bubbles Go Ape from 1991, and this album, uh, I believe this was the second to last album Michael Kisk uh, ever did with them, and it, it's kind of silly, and then the next album gets full silly, and then he left. Uh, this album I bought at a CD store just to have it because I want all their albums. Um, honestly, it's really all, not all that great. I will say this is interesting here. It shows the band members holding a pumpkin with eggs on their eyes. Like literal like fried egg. But uh, the only songs in here that I think are good are uh, the, uh, the eighth track, Mankind, and uh, track 10, The Chance. That's it. Otherwise, this album is not that great. I will get the rest of their stuff total because I've heard they're actually really good. Um, but, I mean, I have the, the must-owns, Keeper of the Seven Keys 1 and 2. I want to get that third one, even though it's not Michael Kisk. And then I have uh, their second most recent album, uh, Straight Outta Hell. But I have this now. It's okay. It was kind of a disappointment, but whatever. I'm not going to worry about it. Kind of a disappointing ending to this video. Sorry, guys, but they're pretty much the most popular metal band I have on here. So that is it for all of the CDs. I, I don't even know how long this video is going to be. I also don't know if the next video is going to top it because they're both probably going to be about the same length. The last and final part of my six month collection video is going to be video games if you weren't expecting that after this. But it is video games and there's a lot in that one too. Uh, and Crystal will be back. So we'll see y'all later. Bye bye.